Mm, giant freaking toad. Oh my god. You know, I've been crappy fishing for 25 plus years. You know, I'm 33, been doing it since I can remember, honestly. But there are still some days that when I get out there, it's a struggle bus. I can't get a fish to bite. Uh, and now with forward facing sonar, I see exactly what they're doing. They're not chasing, they're not biting. You know, my biggest rule of thumb when crappy fishing is fish 10 minutes, see what the fish are doing, and go to the next one. Because as you'll see in today's video, I found a lot of places. I think I only recorded my live scope two or three times, but there were some places that just had hundreds and hundreds of quality fish. Now, I did catch two of the biggest fish I've caught this year but I'm gonna explain how I caught those two fish in today's video. Oh my god! <laughs> oh no, that daggone little stinker! Y'all can't tell me big fish don't eat little baits. Sorry about the wind noise. Ain't nothing I can do about it. That's a freaking toad. Another 14 incher. Same spot. Grinding it out. It took me. 12 minutes to get this one they're coming in and out of this channel there's a the, the river channel runs probably about 40 yards this way they're just pulling up i don't know that one might be 13 inches ain't as big as the first one that's a freaking that's a hee haw <laughs> yeah that's what i'm talking about let's see how long he is 14 inches. <laughs> oh man, it's a toad. So hopefully, it can teach you something about the days that you don't get bites. See, starting out, I had a plan to fish, you know, a couple brush piles. Brush piles near the river channel are really good post-spawn areas. So I ended up trying these brush piles near these river channels and they had fish on them. Don't get me wrong, there was, you know, there was a mixed quantity of fish. But almost every brush pile that I found had catfish. It's that time of year, the catfish were spawning, they were getting these brush piles and eat crappy like a filet mignon. So <laughs> that I kind of had to scrap the idea of fishing the brush piles in 15 to 20 feet of water. So I was like, well, I'll go check a couple docks. Check a couple docks, a lot of fish on the docks. So, I mean, check, check this out right here. Do y'all look, look at the screen right now. The moment when you're having a bad That is all crappy. You pull it to a dock. There's probably at least 200 crappy next no. to this bowl on this dock. They probably won't even start. I caught one fish out of this entire school and I fished it for 30 minutes. I should have left a long time ago. So, you know, fast forward, a couple hours went by, I checked a couple docks. You know, I caught one here, one there. I found a couple on a really shallow brush pile, but the wind was blowing like 10 to 15 at the time that I found a really good school of like, you know, 12 inches wolf packing. Ended up trying to record a live scope video so I could show you how to set it up, how to find your jig, blah, 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 blah. 
we said a video is coming. It's just I got to pick a better day where the wind's not blowing me all over the place and I end up losing the entire school trying to look at my camera over, well, look at my live scope over the camera. It just wasn't working out. But, so I was like, all right. So I ended up going to check a, a deeper place. This place is in 25 to 30 feet. And what I ended up finding was, for lack of better terms, the mother load of 13 plus inch crappy. There were probably at least 20 crappy that would go a pound and a half to over two pounds in this one area. Now, how many of those crappy did I catch? I caught two. And how long did I fish it? At least two hours. Now, my like I said at the beginning of the video, my rule of thumb, fish it for 10 minutes, go on. But the simple fact that these fish were huge, and I'm a YouTuber, and I want to catch you guys huge fish, I threw the entire kitchen sink at them. I mean, let's, get it, let's, let's be honest, I own a bait company. I've got every color you, you can imagine. I've got every profile that I personally think that you can catch a crappy on. And I threw every single dag on one of them at them. So what ended up happening is what I figured out fishing for these bigger crappy, 13, 14 inch, you know, giants for down here. Now you got them white crappy up north, you know, that ain't nothing to you. But a 14, to 16 inch black crappie in my opinion that's a freaking stud that is a slab daddy call home to papa be like hey i got dinner and one fish but the way i ended up catching these two that were over 13 inches is with one particular bait now the first one i caught on the monkey milk little stinker now I was throwing the minnow the beaver the fluke uh, I swam a swim bait by them and nothing I was like I'll just put one of these little tiny baits on and I'll just pop them in the head with them. that's exactly what I did now the two I caught I will admit these were not on the structure that I was fishing these were coming in and out the structure. They were they were like wolf packing, but they were like a solo wolf pack, if that makes sense. Like like I said in previous videos, like 11 to 13 inches love to get like five or six of them together in wolf pack. And those are some of the easiest fish to catch because they will fight over your bait. These two bigger fish were alone and they were feeding. The other 20 that were just gigantic, like I would love to get those to bite. They were positioned on the brush, on the structure. Every now and then you'd get a follower, but it just wasn't happening with them. I had a couple tear the tail off my minnow. I mean, they just did not want to bite. And some days on the water, you're going to have that. You're gonna have days where you find a buttload of fish that just won't commit. And now, am I blaming it on the northeast wind? I mean, the old saying goes, when the wind blows from the east, the fish bite the least. But at the same time, during that day, they had to bite sometime. And I believe that was probably more in the afternoon. I majority fish mornings. I mean, fishing to me is a job. I have to go film videos. I have to do this, that, etc. I have four kids at the house and one moved out. So I try to be back at the house by the time they get out of school. So fishing in the afternoon is a very, very rare occasion for me. But, you know, I could tell you all the excuses in the world, but point blank simple these fish did not want to cooperate my dad was actually out there the yesterday too he was fishing towards uh, the mid, mid lake and I was in the rivers <clears throat> and he ran into the same thing I mean we ended up with 20 plus fish 
So that's, you know, nine hours of me fishing, and I think he fished like six hours. And everywhere we went had hundreds and hundreds of fish. There was two docks in particular. You couldn't even see the poles. There were so many fish under these docks. So how do you make a day better when it sucks? And the point blank simple guys, the easiest thing to do is to just downsize. You know, if they don't want to bite, that's fine. But you just want to downsize. This 1.5 inch little stinker is about as, as a daggone fly. This thing is as about as small and no action. All you got is that tail down there doing that. And you want to dead stick it on the brush pile. You want to dead stick it on the bridge. You don't want to do nothing. Because as I've said in previous videos, I'm going to hold this thing as still as I possibly can. You see how the tail is just still moving and I mean I'm really trying to be still. You have a heartbeat. I call it the heartbeat technique. Every human has a natural shape. You know, the older you get, the worse it gets. So, when you're sitting there holding your rod, you think you're being still, but under in that water, that, that thing is just going. I mean, it's not going like that. It's probably going like, like that right there. Maybe. Right there. That's what it's doing. <clears throat> so, when you have days where they don't want to commit, they don't want to bite, the best thing to do is to slow down, stick with it, I mean, I know you should be finding some fish that you want to bite, and I would have, but let's be honest, guys, my boat goes six miles an hour. I ain't going too far too fast. So when I find a, a, a big wad of, you know, tournament winning fish, I'm going to try to catch them, because I want you guys at home to see them. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the fish catches in this video. They were some daggum giants caught, you know, well, two two giants caught, you know, other ones were kind of, you know, cookie cutters. I'm going to make a, a daggum taco out of them. But, you know, just downsize. Biggest tip, downsize, stick with it, you know, listen to your gut. If you're fishing somewhere and you think you can get on the bite, go for it. But other times... Do what I said, keep moving. Don't do what I say and don't do what I do. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. We got a lot of content coming. I got a lot of live scope training videos planned to make. You know, I'm planning them out. I'm trying to get the best way to record my screen because I don't have a graph that allows me to record it. So I think I kind of figured it out yesterday. So we're going to get those out. If you have a video idea, drop it down below. And I'll probably do it. I'm trying to do about three to four videos a week because the more I make, the more y'all watch, the more I teach you, the more baits I sell, the more ad revenue on YouTube, and everything comes together, the more subscribers, etc. So expect a lot more content, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Yee -yee.